What is up, everybody? Uh, we have a special training for you today with Taylor Conroy from the Idea Collective. You can see him on my right or left hand side, whatever side he's on right now. Uh, but this is going to be an awesome training because I do not just invest into anybody, but I invested into Taylor uh, to help me land a TED Talk uh, next, uh, next year. And I wanted to bring all of that, what the kids would say, sauce. Uh, to you guys showing you how to land a TED Talk um, without jumping through the hoops um, of uh, finding events and applying to events, how to close 2019 out with momentum and scale your business by sharing your message in 2020, and how to position yourself as the authority in your industry and crush business, uh, your business goals with grace. And the number one thing, that one thing that TEDx event organizers are looking for in upcoming speakers and how to leverage a TEDx talk to get more clients and grow your business. Um, and I've seen a little bit of uh, behind the scenes of what Taylor has helped people accomplish. He's helped over 200 people land TEDx talks. I think he is 100% on helping people land TEDx talks. Uh, is that true? Correct, yeah. 100%, hopefully I'm not the first one that fails. Yeah. Uh, and also, he's been on four TEDx stages himself um, and has just crushed it. And that's his passion, helping other people uh, land TEDx talks and execute them and help them grow their business through TEDx talks. So if you're with us live right now, hashtag live. Uh, if you're on the replay, hashtag replay. Um, and Taylor, thank you so much for being with us, brother. Cruzy, there's nowhere else I'd rather be than with you, me in my living room, you in your living room. I just want one of those sweatshirts ASAP. When are you going to send me that? Ooh, uh, uh, join the program. But <laughs> <laughs> perfect, perfect response. Well, I would rather uh, not be anywhere else but here with you because you always warm my, my heart, and I'm sure you're going to warm everybody else's heart here. So I'm excited for it. Thanks, man. Well, why don't we segue? Let's use that warm heart as the segue. You guys, my goal on this training is not to just be like, here's a little dab or like a little bit of what a TEDx talk is all about. And here's a little bit about how to get one. I would really love for all of you to know exactly how to go out and land a TEDx talk by the time I'm done talking tonight. So that's my goal and my commitment to you. And in that, I like to kind of be, go a bunch of different places on the way to teaching you how to get a TEDx talk. And where I'd love to start is my journey. Uh, I'll just give you a bit of background of how I got involved in doing my first TEDx talk, which spawned into doing four, um, and then somehow ended with me helping like 200 people land their own TEDx talks. And I wanna walk you through the exact step-by-step -step process of how all of these people have landed these TEDx talks so that you can do it too and make 2020 a big monstrous FES year for you. So back to the beginning, in a nutshell, um, flashback to 2011. 2011, I had never spoken uh, on a stage before in my life. Doing a webinar like this to more than two people would have completely terrified me. I was petrified of and horrified of public speaking. And my girlfriend at the time um, suggested that I do a TEDx talk. So I went through a process and I landed my first TEDx talk and I called that TEDx talk, how to build a school in three hours. Okay. So it's called how to build a school in three hours. And you can check it out. It's still on there. You can see how nervous I looked. And that talk was on building schools in developing countries. So I, my main focus was I had this idea to build schools in Kenya. And I, the, my main idea was how to raise $10,000 in a really short amount of time. And I thought this idea could freaking change the world. If, if everyone just heard this thing, this, this idea could raise enough money to build potentially hundreds of schools. And so I did this TEDx talk. Again, you got to check it out. You can see I'm sweating. I've got a red blotchy neck. My pits are sweaty. Uh, my, it sounds like I was just chewing on like two bags of cotton. My mouth is like so dry, but that talk went really well uh, at the time or shortly after the talk, about 50,000 people watched it. And 2,000 of those 50,000 people signed up saying that they wanted to raise money like I had just talked about in the, in the TEDx talk. They said they wanted to raise money to build a school in Kenya, um, which is what I was talking about. And so before the talk, I had raised $10,000 and built one school. 
this cost ten thousand dollars to build a school in this region uh, i had raised ten thousand dollars and built one school and because of the talk i'm going to fast forward we were able to fund 500 uh, schools libraries water projects girls scholarships anti-sex trafficking work in cambodia you know hundreds and hundreds of projects all over the world and the reason we were able to fund hundreds and hundreds of projects is because something started happening after that TEDx talk, which I've now seen happen over and over again with myself and my clients, which is what I call the train going by. It's what I call the TEDx effect, okay? And what the TEDx effect is, is once you do a TEDx talk correctly and you get it out there into the world, then this really interesting thing starts happening where you get Facebook messages and emails and Instagram DMs, people reaching out to you, and all of the messages sound the exact same. They all start the exact same way. I watched your TEDx talk and, I watched your TEDx talk and I wanna start raising money. I watched your TEDx talk and I wanna hear more about your program. I watched your TEDx talk and I wanna go on a date with you, or whatever it is. It could be a potential good addition to your Tinder profile. But for now, the TEDx effect is what we like to see our clients generate because that's what leads to paid speaking gigs, coaching clients, uh, book sales, you know, engagements to speak all over the world. That's what I really want for my clients and that's what I would love for you. And so that's what we call the TEDx effect. So that's what started happening with me. I, people started reaching out saying they wanted to raise money. We built all these, these schools and libraries all over the world. And then, and Cruzy, um, give me some shared screen, would you buddy? I'd love to show, look at you just like magically appear. Um, <laughs> I want to show you guys the first person that I ever helped to get a TEDx talk. And Cruzy, could you share, put my... Um, yes, I got you and I will go away. There Here, there you go. You got, is it working? Okay, cool. I'm guessing it is. So if you guys can see my, see my screen, this young man, his name's Kevin Briel. And this talk that he did is called Confessions of a Depressed Comic. So when he came to me, he was like, hey, you know, what I want to do is I want to help to destigmatize mental health. He had a mission, and my guess is like everyone watching this, by the way, chances are if you're watching this and you're involved with Andrew Cruz, you have a mission on earth. You have a message inside you that you potentially want to get out of your head, out of your heart, and like into the world where it belongs. So this guy was very similar to you and I. He had a message and he wanted to get it out. He wanted to destigmatize mental health. He wanted to help people that were going through depression and, and anxiety and bipolar disorder. And so he did, he came to me and he said, hey, I wanna you know, do all of these things. I said, this is what we're gonna do. Pause your plans on doing a documentary on mental health. Pause your plans on raising money for mental health. I'm gonna show you how to get a TEDx talk. And with that TEDx talk, I'll show you how to spread it so that it gets all the views that you want it to get and it gets in front of the right people. And I said that TEDx talk will lead to speaking gigs. It could potentially lead to a book deal. It will lead to documentary funding and it will lead to, to, for you to, to be fundraising. It's in my mind, a TEDx talk is, we, we all know like the 80, 20 rule here, you guys, right? You know, 20% uh, of, of your actions uh, contribute to 80% of your results, right? The 80, 20 rule or the Pareto principle. What I look at TEDx being is like the 99, one rule. It's the 1% of actions that will lead to 99% of the results. And that's what I told this kid. He was 18 when I first met him. And, uh, and so we did, we went out, we helped him land a TEDx talk. He landed it and I'll scroll down here. You can see it's on the, the main TED, web, TED website now. So it's definitely a TED talk. If you can see where my mouse is, that talk now has 4.4 million views. It's one of the most watched um, TEDx talks of all time. And another thing worth noting on this on this um, uh, screen is right here, what I'm highlighting here, it says TEDx, Amb TEDx Kids at Ambleside. Okay, Ambleside is a high school and it's a TEDx Kids event, meaning this guy, Kevin, who did his talk when he was 19 years old, he was like the grandpa of the event. Yeah, he was, and Cruz, you can take my, uh, the screen share off, thanks. Where were we, there we go. So he was, oh, we got the infinite screens. Um, he was like the grandpa of this TEDx event. 
And so what's meaningful about that and the, what's meaningful about it being TEDx kids at Ambleside is that in the, in the audience, there were 30 people. There were 30 human beings. I was there, his mom was there, his sister was there. We were 10% of the audience, just us. So 30 people in this multi-purpose room in the back of a high school. And that talk has reached 4.4 million people. That talk still gets watched 40,000 times per month. That talk led to Kevin, that led to the TEDx effect happening for Kevin. So it led to people writing an email saying, I watched your TEDx talk and it saved my life. I watched your TEDx talk and I was about to commit suicide and I'm not going to commit suicide because of watching your talk. I watched your TEDx talk and I want you to come and speak at our university. I want you to watch your TEDx talk and I think you need to write a book. Kevin signed a $100,000 book deal because of his TEDx talk, because of one book agent watching his TEDx talk, reaching out to him saying, hey, this is amazing. Obviously people want to hear your message. So let's talk about a book deal. He signed one with Penguin Random House for six figures. Um, like I said, when he was, I think 20, when he signed the book deal, and it also led to hundreds of paid speaking gigs. He spoke at Yale, he spoke at Penn State, he's spoken all over the world, and it led to all of those things that he wanted to do in the first place. The documentary funding, a telecommunications company in Canada where, where myself and Kevin are from, um, offered to fund an entire documentary on mental health. He got the book deal, he got the speaking gigs, and now his job is the same job that I would love to for you guys to have the opportunity to have, and maybe some of you already have, but he's a full-time messenger. Okay, his job is to get his message out to people over and over and over again. He does it by his speeches, by books, by uh, writing stuff online. His job is getting his message out further and further and further. And in my opinion, that's what we're here to do. Chances are, if you guys are like watching this, you've gone through some stuff in your life. You know, if you're a coach or you're doing some deep online business, you've gone through some stuff that you can now help other people go through faster and easier. And in my mind, like back to that 99-1 rule, and uh, the TEDx talk is the 1% of your actions that can lead to 99% of your results, okay? So that's the background in a nutshell. And I wanna get like really, right now, get really deep into your tangible so that you guys could be applying to TEDx events tonight if, if you wanted to. And before I say that, I wanna give a little disclaimer. The disclaimer is that I don't watch, I, or sorry, I don't um, work for TED or TEDx. Uh, I, I'm not endorsed by them or affiliated with them or sponsored by them or anything like that. And the reason I say that is because I'm going to talk about TEDx. Uh, I'm going to probably say TEDx like 200 times in this broadcast. And just because I'm so jacked up about it doesn't mean that I work for them. The reason that I'm so jacked up about them is because I've seen the results that they've had. Right? Actually, maybe Cruzy, can you give me another screen share for a second? I'd love to show you guys one more example. There we go. This woman here, um, her name is Cynthia Thurlow. So this is another, I guess, just an example of what a TEDx talk can do. This woman, Cynthia, um, did her, she's a client of ours. She did her talk, oh, maybe four months ago. I think, was it, yeah, it says right there, May. So May, June, July, August, September, October, November. So actually about six or seven months ago. And that talk, as you can see now, has 4.2 million views on it, 4.2 million views. And that talk has completely shifted her business and her life. So she's a coach. I know a lot of you guys are coaches. She's a healthcare practitioner turned entrepreneur slash coach. And she can't, oh my crane, I was like, oh, and she can't take another client on for another year because she's so booked up their coaching business because of this talk. She's gotten the offer, the offers for book deals. She's gotten a six figure uh, speaking to her because of this talk. Before then, she had never even charged $5,000 for a talk. And now she's getting paid 10, 10K per talk and booking multiple, multiple, multiple um, speaking gigs and a world tour because of this talk. And that's what I would love for you guys. Because again, that's what she's doing. Is she's getting out there and sharing a message with the world in a big, beautiful way. Um, and sometimes my mouse acts up, which is doing now. Let's see if this works. There we go. So give me one sec. There. there. Thanks, Cruzy. You can take the screen share off. Please. Thank you, brother. So I want to walk through exactly how Cynthia landed her TEDx talk and set some really realistic expectations for you in landing your TEDx talk so that you don't get out there and kind of start applying and then fall flat. So you get out there knowing what to expect, how long it's going to typically take, 
And I want to dive into like what um, Andrew uh, introduced in the first place, exactly what it is that TEDx organizers are looking for so that you can be as efficient as humanly possible and apply in a really, really high quality way. Cool. So this is the shift. We're going to shift from, from beginning to now let's get into the lessons. So how Cynthia landed her talk is step number one, the way that I, the way that it happened with us was she hopped on, hopped on a phone call with our team and talked about her idea because it's very typical. And I wouldn't be surprised if you guys are the same way is very typical for people to have way more than one idea. The biggest thing that we see over and over again is people have two TEDx ideas or three TEDx or five TEDx. I think someone came in, they've had eight different ideas that they said they could potentially talk about. And people usually need help on narrowing down what is the best TEDx talk to give. Which one of those ideas is going to, let's say, get the most views and, and all of the good things that they want out of a TEDx talk. And I wanna share with you the best way to decide which idea is right for you to share is based on this. It's based on, actually I should say, it's based on the question that you ask yourself. So if the question for you when you're deciding from those five different ideas that you have is which, if the if you're asking the questions, um, which of these talks is gonna get the most views? Which of these talks is gonna go the viral the fastest? Which of these talks is going to make me the most money in my business? I wanna be really upfront and blatant and say, those are the three wrong questions to ask. Okay, those are the wrong questions to ask. Those are only going to lead you into making a decision with your head for your TEDx talk rather than based on a beautiful mix of your head and your heart. And here's why that matters is because when you, the number one contributor to your TEDx talk going viral, getting lots of views, getting people motivated to take part in your movement or join your business or buy your book or whatever it is, the number one contributor, uh, hands down across the board is your TEDx talk being a fantastic TEDx talk. The number one contributor is your TEDx talk being an amazing TEDx talk. Okay, and if you're making the decision for your topic based on what you think is going to get the most views, then chances are when you do the talk, you won't actually be super, super passionate and, and lit up and on fire for the topic because you chose it based on what made the most sense. Does that make sense to you guys? If you choose your topic based on what you think is going to get the most views, chances are you're not gonna be able to show up at like a 12 out of 10 on stage emotionally, like presence wise to get your message across to the audience in a really, really powerful way in a way that they will receive it and then want to share it. Okay. And to make this make a little bit more sense, we all know what this is. It's an iPhone. Most of the people that watch your TEDx talk are going to watch it on this. Okay. So when they watch it on this, you are this big on that phone, right? And so you, when they're watching this, they need to feel all the feelings that you're feeling on stage. Okay, if you're getting up there and you're just doing some heady talk on what you think is going to get the most views, then you're not going to be lit up. You're not going to feel all the highs on stage and all the lows and feeling sad and angry and passionate, all of those things that contribute to someone having a wonderful experience watching your TEDx talk. Okay, like the best example that I have is that why we as a culture love to watch romantic comedies. The reason we love to watch romantic comedies is because you, you laugh, you cry, you, you feel suspense, you hope that they're going to get back together in the end or whatever it might be. And then you get that completion and that closure and you feel all the feels on the, in that romantic comedy. And because you felt all the feels at the end of it, you want other people to watch it. And that's the same thing with the TEDx talk is you need to feel all the feels in that talk because at the end of a talk, when someone watches the TEDx talk online, they're not sharing specifically the information that they got out of that talk. They're sharing the way they felt. Right. If I go on, if someone's going to go online and be like, you have to watch this talk, how to build a school in three hours by this guy named Taylor, they're sharing it, not because of what I shared specifically for information wise, they're sharing it because of how I made them feel and they want their friends and their, you know, um, associates to feel the same way. That's why they share a talk. So if you're thinking, if you, if you're trying to decide between five different subjects, what I want you to give yourself permission to do is choose the subject that lights you up the most. Choose the subject that you could talk about all night and just lose track of time. Choose the subject that means the most to you because that's what's going to make you show up at the highest level humanly possible. And you showing up at the highest level humanly possible is going to be the number one contributor to your TEDx talk 
going viral and, and being viewed by a whole bunch of different people. And the last, like the bonus reason for deciding with your heart more than your head, the bonus reason for that is because this TEDx talk is not some one and done flash in a pan, you know, experience that people are going to watch and then never, and then it just kind of falls off the radar. Your TEDx talk is going to live for five, 10, 15 years. When you do this right, like Kevin did this right, he did it in 2013, it's 2019. That TEDx talk was the only video that he had online for like five years. He didn't put any other videos of him speaking online because it converted. And your TEDx talk, when it's converting, you want to want to speak about what you talked about in your TEDx talk because people will come to you saying, when, it, when Andrew does his talk, five years from now, they'll come to him and say, hey, I watched your TEDx talk and I want you to speak at our university. I want you to speak at our mastermind. I want you to speak at War Room. I want you to speak wherever because they watch that TEDx talk. So when choosing which idea to focus on and to highlight in your TEDx talk, it really needs to be the thing that lights you up so much that even in five years or 10 years from now, you're going to want to get out there and speak about it. Cool. So that's, that's the number one thing. So that's what Cynthia did. Back to the example. Train passing. Um, when Cynthia came to me trying to decide which idea that she wanted to talk about, she wanted to talk about perimenopause, she wanted to talk about intermittent fasting, and when she did her talk, as you can you saw there on intermittent fasting, about 4.2 million views because it completely lights her up. She could talk about it all day long. She's obsessed with intermittent fasting, which is a good thing when she talks about intermittent fasting. And so when we got on a, got on a phone call, decided what what her talk was going to be, and then we got into applications. And so this is where. The process, you guys, gets a little bit boring. I'm just going to be super honest with you. It gets a bit tedious and a bit boring. But here's the process for you to be able to go out and start talking or applying for a TEDx talk tonight is step number one, you're going to go to TED.com. So you're going to go to the TED website and you're going to look at, you're going to find the little search bar, the little magnifying glass and search TEDx events. Eventually you'll, eventually you'll find uh, all the different TEDx events that are happening over the next year um, all over the world. And then this is where it gets kind of tedious is that from there, people that we don't work with, the way that they kind of go through this process is they then go onto Google and start Googling. Let's say you found TEDx LA and TEDx LA is, um, is happening in six months from now. You're going to start Googling to try to find the application pages for TEDx LA so that you can apply to be on that TEDx event. Okay, so you're going to go down a whole bunch of different Google wormholes. This is what our team does every every month on behalf of our clients as we go down and find all the different TEDx events that are uh, open for applications. And we present them in a, in a spreadsheet, pass them to our clients so they know exactly who to apply to, when to apply to them, when the applications, page, applications end, and give links to all the application pages. But for yourself, if you want to be doing this like tonight, you can literally go on the TEDx TED website, find TEDx events and start Googling these different TED events, TEDx events and start to apply them if and when you find them. What we find for uh, time estimates, it would take an average of about 10 hours to build a solid spreadsheet of with all the Google wormholing um, to build a solid spreadsheet of TEDx events to apply to. And if you got time on your hands, I would say, heck yes, get out there, do it and start to apply. And that leads into um, what we talked about uh, before this call started, which is what are TEDx organizers really looking for? Okay, uh, the, the thing I always um, tell people is you have you want to think keep two things in mind when starting to apply to these different TEDx events. Number one, you want to think quality, like really high quality, and that's where we dive into what a TEDx organizer is looking for, because. Uh, what I've seen is a lot of people will go out there, they'll start to apply to TEDx events, they don't have a good title, they don't have their idea clear, and therefore they're never going to get selected because the thing, the number one thing that a TEDx organizer is looking for, and we've seen this, we've, we've um, uh, interviewed and surveyed TEDx organizers from around the world, dozens of them, the number one thing that is the most important on your application is that is your unique idea. Okay, that's pretty inherent that t because TED is about, is all about um, ideas worth sharing. But your idea is the number one contributor to you getting chosen to do that TEDx talk. Okay, and if your idea is how to overcome childhood trauma or how to overcome adversity, going to be honest, you and like eighty percent of the other people that are applying for that TEDx event are using that that same type of um, I would say just 
boring topic and you need to stand out. You need to be really, really unique. And the best way to do that, the best way to sum up your title or sum up your um, idea is to do so in a title that is captivating and creates intrigue. Okay, if you're writing anything down, if you're taking any notes, you need to be very clear that your title creates intrigue that opens a loop in the in the potential viewer's mind that they can only close by watching your TEDx talk. Okay, and here's a good example of that. If you were to Google, um, you know, top 25 most watched TED Talks, which I highly encourage you to do, then you'll find that the number one thing that all of the, those top watched TEDx talks have, TED and TEDx talks have in common is they create intrigue. So for a good example, uh, one of the most watched TEDx, TED Talks of all time is called uh, The Most Important Lesson from 80,000 Brain Scans. The Most Important Lesson from 80,000 Brain Scans, which and for me, I find incredibly intriguing. Like I get to learn from this brain scientist, uh, this brain surgeon from, from 80,000 brain scans that he's done and he's boiled it down into the one most important lesson. So it creates intrigue. It creates a loop in my mind of like, well, what is that lesson? And I need to satisfy that, I need to satiate it. And so I have to watch the talk to get it. Another really good example is 10 things you didn't know about orgasm. 10 things you didn't know about orgasm. He's not on the screen right now, but I can literally hear Andrew Cruzy typing that in and probably watch, actually he's probably watched that talk 10 times. Oh, I've great. watched uh, 20. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Still haven't learned a thing. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, I also would love for you to bring up uh, the special gift you have for everyone. So if anybody yeah. has to drop off early, they can still get your special gift. Oh, thank you. And do you have, do you have the gift? Do you I, have have, the I have the link all ready to go and it is so freaking cool. And if I wasn't already working with you, I would jump yeah. on this immediately. Okay, perfect. So thanks for the prompt, the prompt, student, Andrew. So yeah. you guys, what, I, and I kind of missed this in the section of getting clear on what your idea is. What I found, I got on hundreds of calls with people wanting to do TEDx talks, and I saw that the number one thing is that people need clarity on their idea. And so I hired a team of TEDx organizers, viral content creators, and just amazing humans, like TEDx experts, to talk to anyone who's thinking about doing a TEDx talk and help them get clear on their idea. So these people's sole job in the company, all they do all day long is hop on calls with people that are thinking about doing TEDx talks and help them get clear on their ideas. So that's our free gift, is that this is not a sales call, no enrollment conversation. What this is on this call is a free call for you to get clear on your idea and for them to give you feedback on whether this has a potential to be a viral TEDx talk or not. Okay, yep. so. Legit, not a sales call. Um, and you have the best in the industry on the phone to go through this. So guys, if you're thinking about a, TED o a TEDx talk, jump on it and hashtag TEDx right now, drop it down below and I'll send you over the link to schedule it immediately. So TEDx, hashtag it, put it down below and I'll send you over the link. It takes two seconds to fill out and get that call rolling and take action and do it. Yeah. It is like, we've, we've had people jump on these calls that have been unclear on their idea for years and they dive deep with these experts. Like here's one of, Andrew, I think I told you about this person that works with us, her name's Gabby. So Gabby works for Nas Daily, the number one content creator on Facebook, who has the most views to videos of anyone else on Facebook, Nas Daily. She works for Nas, helps him write those videos, produce those videos, and she's a TEDx organizer, right? So she's like, the Venn diagram of Gabby is like viral content, world-class viral content creator and TEDx organizer. You put those together, it's a viral TEDx talk, right? Yeah. The job is to jump on calls with you guys on this on this thread and tell you not only is your your is your idea an amazing TEDx idea, but is your idea going to be a viral TEDx talk? That's yep. Whole, yep. That's the point. Yep. I want to jump on that call with her. You yeah. Should. Cool. She's amazing. And so you, you could have Gabby, you could have Quinton who organizes TEDx events in, in um, South Korea. You could have just amazing humans that are going to give you really, really good clarity on what your idea is. So thanks for that prompt. And um, Joey, you got a, a bunch of free calls open? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Cool. Thanks, Andrew. Um, okay. Yeah. Do you want me to dive into the rest? Dive into it. Keep giving us the sauce. I know it's only going to get better and better and better. Okay, perfect. And how's it, how are we doing for time? It's six oh five. We we are good. I just want more sauce from you. Give us. I, I don't know why I keep saying that. I keep trying to be cool. Yeah. I just turned twenty. We used that earlier. Older. 
you're like, as the kids say, give us <laughs> like, I've never heard a kid say that. Maybe like that's it. me. Yeah, yeah. Give them the tea, or I think they're calling it tea nowadays too. I, I don't I'm know. just going to share some knowledge on TEDx talk and. Uh, I'm yeah. going to go away. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, you guys, if you haven't done it yet, then I suggest whether you're watching on the replay or watching it live, um, hashtag TEDx and Andrew will send you that link so that you can book a call with our team, get super clear on what your idea is, and talk about is it a worthy TEDx talk and is it a TEDx talk that has a potential to go viral? Okay, cool. So where we were at with that is the, the most important things that TEDx talk, TEDx organizers are looking for when selecting a speaker. And like I said, the number one most important thing is your idea. And the best way to communicate your idea in a succinct, fantastic manner is, in, is putting it into a title that is compelling and creates intrigue. Okay, and if you want a lesson, a quick how-to on creating intrigue, look at those top most watched 25 TEDx talks or TED talks of all time. And what I suggest that you do is something we do with our clients, which is use that title structure that you're seeing in those talks. Use that for your title structure. Okay, so as a good example, a client of ours named Eric comes to us. He's like, he's a, he has a college prep company. And so he really likes to help kids find their passions, help them get into a great university. And so what, call, what his, uh, his working title when he came to us was how to find your, how to find your passion which sure sounds fine and cute and super boring at the same time, if you ask me. So what we did with him is we looked up some TED Talks that were already performing well, that were already getting millions of views because, and a big contributor to getting millions of views is your uh, uh, title structure, right? If the title's not compelling, then it doesn't matter who tells you to watch something, chances are you won't watch it, it's not interesting to you. Is we looked at a talk that was performing incredibly well, had over 5 million views and it was called the way we the way we think about charity is dead wrong. This is a TED talk by a guy named Dan Plata. The way we think about charity is dead wrong. Already performing phenomenally well, five million plus views. And so what we did is we took that structure and we reworked it for Eric's talk. Like I said, he's in college prep, so he wanted people that were preparing for college or parents of people that were preparing for preparing for college to watch his talk. And so what he did is he we named his talk "The Way You're Preparing for College Is Dead Wrong." The way you're preparing for college is dead wrong. And so what that does, and this is another like sidebar lesson on how to, how to name your TED, TED talk, is first of all, the people that are going to watch that talk are people that are his, ta his target clients. Okay, These, this is like the people that are watching a talk that says the way you're preparing for college is dead wrong. Personally, I'm not gonna watch that talk, right? I'm a 37 year old male with no thought of attending college or university at the moment. So I'm not gonna watch that talk, but the people that are gonna watch that talk are parents of people, parents of kids that are applying for college and kids that are applying for college who happen to be his exact target demographic. So what he's done, he, number one, he's created intrigue in his title and conveyed his, his idea in a really clear, succinct manner. And number two, he's weeded out people that wouldn't be his target market wouldn't be people that actually wanted that would actually potentially do business with them all within a really cool, compelling title. So best way to do that is to check out the most watched TEDx talks and TED talks of all time, potentially use their structure, plop your um, uh, content or your subject matter in, and therefore you're piggybacking on something that already works, already conveys the idea in a really wonderful way and already creates intrigue. Cool. So that is one way to uh, create an intriguing title. One of the most important thing, or the to uh, um, convey your 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 unique idea very succinctly, which is the number one most important thing to TEDx organizers. Which leads to number two. Number two most important thing to TEDx organizers is that you are coachable. That you're coachable and humble in essence. That's what we heard over and over and over again. Is that TEDx organizers want to be able to work with you a little bit on your topic. They want to be able to kind of like riff with you. If you say your your topic topic is about like eliminating plastics in the ocean, they might want to help you, I don't know, talk about how to use technology to eliminate plastics in the ocean, whatever it might be. So they want you to be coachable um, and humble at the same time, okay? And the number three thing, the third most important thing a TEDx organizer is looking for, and this is super important in your TEDx applications, is they're looking for how your talk is going to impact the audience. Notice. Nowhere in those top three, especially in the third, nowhere in those top three does it say that you need to be a world-renowned speaker 
or that you need to have like some super amazing impressive resume or that you need to have won a whole bunch of prizes nowhere in those top three doesn't say that and this is because like i said number the third one it's all about how your idea is going to impact the audience that tedx organizer is putting in hundreds of hours of volunteer work to put on this tedx event because they're one of their missions in life is to share big beautiful audacious fantastic world-changing ideas with the world right and they want to find those ideas that are genuinely going to impact humanity because that's how this tedx organizer impacts humanity is by getting those ideas out so they want to find ideas that will impact humanity okay so you need to in your application make it very very clear how your idea is going to impact the audience and impact the world where I've, what I've seen people make a big mistake doing is they'll start to fill out um, their applications, trying to prove something, trying to be like, oh, I won this and this is what's great about me and this is a book that I, that I wrote and trying to prove something when in reality, they don't need to prove anything about themselves. What they need to prove is that their idea could impact the world in a big way. Hope that made sense. So those are the top three things that TEDx organizers are looking for. And that dovetails into the two things that I really recommend for people to do. Number one, is focus on highly focus very very highly on quality of your application, making sure that the answers that you're giving to your TEDx um, application are in alignment with what TEDx organizers are looking for. That's number one, and number two is high quantity. So this is where I want to talk to you guys about how long it typically takes to land a TEDx talk, and then I'm going to wrap this um, session up. But how long it typically takes to land a TEDx talk, and what we've seen these hundreds of clients that we've been involved with is that on average, it takes 90 days to land a talk. Okay, so this is you applying to different events. Would you mind sh shutting that window for yeah. me? Thanks. The train again. Um, with, with our clients applying to different TEDx events all over the world, typically 90 days to land the talk. When I say land, I don't mean that you're on stage. What I mean is land as in like you have started your applications, You've applied to a bunch of different events over a few few months, roughly 90 days till you get that like final email saying, congratulations, you've landed a TEDx talk at TEDx Purdue or something like that. And I say that to congratulate Joey. You guys can see this guy, Joey. He works with us at the Idea Collective. He just landed his fourth TEDx talk. Congratulations again, uh, which is at TEDx Purdue. And so for, it typically takes about 90 days to land the TEDx talk then an average of 90 days after that for you to actually do your talk till you're actually on stage. Okay. So like Joey just got his confirmation um, email about TEDx Purdue, I think just within the last week. And on average, it would take another 90 days for that TEDx talk to actually happen and for him to be on stage. Okay. And this is why it's important. If you guys are thinking, whoa, like, wow, that's six months from now, if you started now, it's typically six months till you're on stage and you're thinking that you wanna do a TEDx talk in 2020, I wanna go back to what Andrew mentioned about like hopping on one of these calls, getting clear on your message is like absolutely paramount and pivotal before you do your applications. So I would highly suggest if you haven't booked a call yet, hashtag TEDx, Andrew, whether you're watching this live or you're watching this on the replay, Andrew will send you a link to um, to book a call to get really clear on your idea because if you want to do a TEDx talk in 2020, genuinely, now's the time to start. Were you going to say something, Cruzy? No, uh, keep keep rolling. Okay, cool. Just pop I'm just popping in. I'll, I'll be back. Perfect. You're watching. So um, those are those are those are my biggest recommendations. Again, is high quality applications and high quantity applications. So quantity. Here's a I don't know what you guys think of from like a spiritual uh, uh, side or like the universal uh, abundance type feeling. I don't know exactly what it is that you guys are, um, how you guys feel and what your views are. But my views, is, my view is that the world is made up of energy and the energy that you put, up, put out is the energy that you get back. And so when I say high quality, high quantity applications, what I mean is that if you submit one or two applications and that's it, chances are the energy that you're going to be putting out into the universe is like this. Oh, I applied for one or two. I hope I get it. Cause if I don't get one of those, then I just haven't got a TEDx talk and you've done like a little bit of the work that you could possibly do that is within your control, but you haven't done all the work that's within your control. And the energy that you would put out there, if you've sat down and you've applied to 20 or 30 or 40 applications or 40 TEDx events, the energy that you're going to be putting out there is I've done what I could do. 
I've done everything I could. I've, I've like, you know, you can let go and let God or let go and let flow or whatever you want to say. You've done the things that are within your control as a human being to move toward the dream that you have of doing a TEDx talk. And that's what I feel like is our job on this planet is like to decipher what's within my control, what's not within my control. And when you find what is within your control, doing all of that in as high quality a way as possible, and therefore to set yourself up for as good a results as humanly possible. So high, qual high quality, doing what TEDx organizers are looking for, high quantity, applying to dozens and dozens and dozens of different events, if that's what needs be, right? We just had a client land a talk after six applications. Joey, how many applications did you send out for those 14. 14? So Joey sent out 14 applications. He landed four. He's a bit of a freak of nature. That's not typical. So but just know that sometimes people have to send out dozens and dozens of, dozens of applications to land their talk. And if you really want this and you know how it's going to impact your business, then you will know that all of the time spent doing it is absolutely well worth the time spent. And that, oh, I just want to just check here. Cruzy, got a question, Taylor. Need more clarity on something? Now's the time to ask. Oh, were you going to say something, Cruzy? No, uh, I, I want you to wrap up and then- Okay, cool some questions ready to go for you. So whenever that is, I'll pop back up on screen, but. Perfect. <laughs> so here's to wrap that up, you guys, and I know you just kind of skimmed the surface, um, but if you wanted to go out and apply to TEDx events right now, I'm just gonna be open and honest. Like I said, it's kind of a boring process of finding the different events, making a spreadsheet with all of these different events, hoping that you're applying to the right events and they haven't closed yet, trying to find the theme of those events. It takes a long time. And that is where I would love to be of service to you guys. Like my job here with our clients is to take the hours from what it takes on average, about 150 hours for someone to go out there and land their own TEDx talk. That's what we've seen with, with people that aren't working with us, about 150 hours. We want to shrink that down to as few hours as humanly possible. Ideally from your time, we like to shrink that down to 10 hours or less. In a perfect world, five hours or less. So that's our goal is to shrink 150 down to like five to 10 because we know that a TEDx talk, and I've seen it over and over again with myself, with our clients, with friends, and I know I get to see it with Joey soon too, that a TEDx talk will be not only the number one contributor to your business, whether you're wanting to sell books or you're wanting to get coaching clients or whatever it might be to contribute to your business, it's not only gonna be the number one contributor to your business, but in my mind, it's the number one contributor to your life. For me, I, that first TEDx talk that I did, like I told you, that how to build a school in three hours, it was an idea. I wanted to raise enough money to build, like I had raised enough money to build one school. It led to 500. It completely changed my life. It shifted the trajectory of my path. And I've seen it do, seen TEDx talks do that for people over and over and over again. And it helped me to become what I would love for everyone is to become a full-time messenger, which is it led to me speaking at the United Nations and Harvard and Princeton and Cornell and NYU and hundreds of, of speaking gigs all over the world, which is a blast. And it's not just about the fun or the money. It's really about becoming someone, becoming a full-time messenger where my job is to get out there and do webinars like this or to speak to audiences or to write blog posts or to be in interviews, be on podcasts, whatever it might be, to share the message that I'm here to share with the world, which is what I would love for all of you guys. So I think that's it. Cruzy, it's wrapped. And I'm happy to jump into whatever you want to do next. Dude. That was awesome. As the kids would say, you brought the sauce. Uh, and I'll stop saying that. Uh, but I, think, I think the coolest thing was um, uh, titling the TED Talk, which we talked a little bit about it, but what stuck out to me was like, have an open loop, like create open loops for people when, you, uh, when you're creating your TEDx title. Uh, your talk title. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, like another one, good one is, you know, Sir Ken Robinson's is, do schools kill creativity? the question another fantastic open loop it's like uh i don't know do they it's been watched 50 million times and another one that's up there i mean you guys have all heard of simon sinek we've all heard of simon sinek because we're probably amongst the 45 million human beings that have watched that talk right mm -hmm. his talk is called how great leaders inspire action and it's just a really good really good potent example of the content of a talk being the thing that that sells that talk. He doesn't have any slides in that talk. He did, did it at TEDx Puget Sound. So this tiny little spot in Washington state with maybe like 40, 50 people in the audience, his microphone stops working halfway through and they had to like switch it out. He has no slides. He's got a flip chart from Office Depot and a freaking Jiffy marker 
and he's drawing circles. I don't know if you remember that talk very well, like the golden circles that he's doing, but yeah, yeah, yeah. it just gives an, it's an example of these, these TEDx talks. They don't need to be super fancy. They don't need to be crazy, but this, that thing contributed more to his book sales, to his consulting company to like, we all know who he is now because of that TEDx talk. I mean, his career has just gone right after that. Yeah. Ridiculous. Like that. <laughs> yeah, just straight up. It's not even like, it's not slanted. There are yeah, any exactly. straight. Um, we have a few questions here, but before we dive into them, and thank you so much, uh, Galen and Kavitha. Uh, thank you so much for your questions and playing all out on these lives. I love getting questions and I love selfish questions as well. The worst thing somebody can say to you is no. So ask selfish questions, drop them down below there and get Taylor to answer them for you. Um, but I'd love for you to dive into what exactly do they get out of the 20 minute call again? The absolutely free call, no sales. What exactly did they get out of that? I mean, they're going to get, dude, they're going to know. A lot of times people come out of those calls knowing their life mission more, more than they've ever known it before, right? Like the, the, the goal is you get on that call, it's all about you. It's all about you just saying, like, what are all the ideas that you've got? What do you think could shift humanity? What lights you up the most? Like just share all your ideas that you have and you have, and I a, likely a TEDx organizer or like, a Gabby TEDx organizer and viral content creator giving you feedback on like the deepest recesses of your mind and helping you get clear on what it is that you're actually meant to share in the world, right? Because your TEDx, the, the subject that your TEDx talk should be on is the subject that, of the thing that you should be sharing with the world. A TEDx talk is simply a vehicle for getting a message out into the world. It's a very potent, effective, efficient vehicle. In my mind, the most potent, effective, efficient vehicle for getting a message out into the world. And when you get clear on that as a human being, there is nothing more powerful than that. There's nothing more powerful than waking up in the morning and knowing exactly what you fucking stand for. This is what I'm doing today and here's why. So that's, yes, the call is like a, a free 20 minute ideation call, whatever. This is a call to get you clear on what you're here to do in your life, right? Because what you're supposed to do your TEDx talk in my mind should reflect what you're here to do in your life. So that's what the free TEDx, that's what the free call is about is like getting really clear on what your TEDx idea is and getting feedback, is it a viral, is it a viable TEDx idea? We're gonna we'd be the first people to tell you that is not a very good idea for a TEDx talk. You should probably go do something else. You know, we'll absolutely give you that feedback. And if at the end of that call you you feel like a big fuck yes, like yes, I want to do this, I really want to move towards getting a TEDx talk, and our team feels like this person's awesome, they've got the passion, they've got the energy, then we can be like, cool, why don't you hop on a call with our team to dive in deeper? You know, talk about how we can work together, how you don't have to go on TED.com and search for TEDx events and compile some stupid spreadsheet and hope that you're applying to the right events. We have, we've had people that have been applying for, to TEDx events for two years before they started working with us. They work, start working with us. Two weeks later, they land, they land a talk. Jeez. Right? Like I, for me, it's about time. You got it's time and money, and time is money. Like you, everyone that's on this group is an entrepreneur, right? Unequivocally, unequivocally across, across the board is my guess that you guys are all entrepreneurs. We only have so much time in the day. Do you want to spend time going out there and gathering spreadsheets and hoping you're applying to the right places? Or do you want to get out there and know that you're putting in the highest high quality applications as humanly possible and a super high quantity in a very, very short amount of time so you can skip the whole stage of landing the talk and then just move on to like practicing the talk, doing the talk, spreading the talk so you get it a million views and then get to the point where a Kevin or a Cynthia or Eli or Suzanne, or name it, one of our clients has been, where's that now, where their TED Talk is the number one piece of content they've ever created, and all they need to do is put more money behind spreading that TED Talk, if that's what they want to do, if that's what gets them a clear ROI, or using organic strategies to get paid speaking gigs, book sales, coaching clients, clients for their business, you know, like how, how much would it be worth to you having a TED Talk that, you know, like did what, what I did. 4% of the people that watch that TED Talk, TED Talk like I said, 2,000 to 50,000, 2,000 people signed up saying they wanted to build schools. 2,000 to 50,000, that's 4%. That's a crazy conversion for like someone's watching a video on YouTube and taking the action to go and find the website to put in their name saying, I want to do this too. That's why it raised $5 million, right? There's like, there's hands, like I said to you earlier, Andrew, I'm getting like lit up about this, but yeah, I've spoken all over the world, nothing, nothing, Harvard, Princeton, they do nothing compared to what a TEDx talk has done for my business, for my life, for the impact, zero. It's like, 
and imagine even like combining that with the seven figure CEO, imagine combining your strategies of leveraging Facebook groups. Imagine popping that, imagine people watching that TEDx talk before they hop on a sales call with you, right? If someone's watched your TEDx talk, they've watched 15 minutes of you giving the most potent version of your life, the things that you're so fucking passionate about that it makes you weep. They've watched for 15 minutes, they've watched you give the basically the best sales pitch of all human, of all time. Then they get on a, TED, a call with you. I guarantee you the call is not gonna start with, yeah, my name's Sarah, it's nice to meet you, Andrew Kruse. I saw like a couple of videos on TED. On, and, and, I they're gonna say, I watched your TED Talk, and you're gonna be like, good, you get me. And if they're getting on the call after they've watched the TED Talk, they're not getting on the call to get to know you, they're getting on the call to do business. Yep, and that's a big reason why I invested in you, and also to save a shit ton of time, because I know like learning everything to set up a TED Talk and land a TED Talk, like you said, could take 150 hours or more. Um, and some people two years, I just want to do it in 10 hours and have you guys take it, take care of it for me. And mm -hmm. also what you said about the, um, uh, about the call, like your life is determined by the quality of questions you ask yourself. And like your you and your organizers are literally feeding the questions that people should be asking themselves to get closer to their why. And that is just invaluable. So if you guys want to get that free call uh, and uh, learn what your TED Talk should be about or shouldn't be about, which might be more valuable, um, hashtag TEDx down below and I will send you over the link personally. Um, TEDx down below and you'll get uh, a little scheduler link to sign up for a 20 minute call. Commit, do it. Um, I know those are going to fill up. I know we already sent out like 20 some links. Um, so TEDx down below and I'll send that over. And Taylor, if you're open for it, we got a bunch. We have like five questions here for you. Uh, sure. Do you have time to answer those? Yes, sir. Cool. Awesome. Uh, first, oh, yeah, here, uh, first one here is from uh, Galen. Uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. I'm terrible with names and numbers. I'm sure you guys all know that. Um, so Taylor, uh, do you have the same idea slash talk for different locations or a new talk for each location? So my suggestion would be do one talk for, and then do your next talk two years down the road. I wouldn't suggest booking two TEDx talks and doing two different talks. And the, to answer that question succinctly, you can't do the same talk at multiple TEDx events. You can only do one talk you know, per TEDx event. And the reason that I say do space them out by two years is because if you really get really deep into what you feel like you're meant to share right now, once you finish the talk, then you wanna put some, some effort into marketing it. You wanna put some effort into like getting that talk out to the millions of people that are supposed to see it rather than starting to work on your next talk. Me, I'm a big proponent of being very focused on what you're doing. So really focused on landing the talk, then be really focused on getting ready for the talk, then be really focused on uh, on getting the talk to all the people that should see it. Then after that's passed and it's all over and done and you've learned what you've learned, you've got tons of feedback on the talk, then maybe do your next one. So yes, I've done four, but that's over a period of eight years. Mm -hmm. right? If I do one over two years, it typically takes that much time for like for all of the, uh, for basically the next big thing to kind of build up inside me that warrants me doing another TED Talk. Mm -hmm. um, I actually have a personal question. After you have landed your talk, you know where you're going to do it. How long do you typically have to prepare for the talk? On average, 90 days. 90 days. Yeah, cool. about three months. And the, the shortest that I've seen, we have a client who landed her TED Talk. She's already done it, but she had so many applications out that she landed another one. And it was in Auckland, New Zealand. And it was literally five days later. They're like, is there any way you can come and do a talk? We really have your application. We had someone drop out. We will pay for your ticket if you can just get down here and do the talk. And she was like, hell yes. And I think she's in Auckland. Well, she's probably still there now. She just did it on Saturday. So it's very possible to do multiple. Some happen very fast. Some happen six months down the road, but the average is, is 90 days. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, we've got, this might have answered Kavitha's question, but she's saying, hi, uh, is it the same process to get uh, to talk at regional TEDx or other countries. Could you say that again? Uh, she's asking, is the process the same, the process that you teach the same in other countries, essentially? Yep, yeah, it is. Cool. Uh, 
Um, if you live in a country outside the U.S., can you still land a TED Talk? Yes. yes. I live, I live Is that on your FAQ on your website? Yeah, we should add that. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I live in Canada, and, or don't now, I used to, I, and I have done a few TED, TEDx talks, and we've landed clients talks in Australia, in France, and I think we've landed one in Ireland, maybe another one in Sweden. So absolutely, they're all over the world. Cool. Uh, Nick is asking, do I do a TEDx uh, just to help raise awareness and fu fundraising for elder abuse? Oh, she, he says, could I do a TEDx yeah. for that? Yeah, I mean, mine was all about fundraising. You know, I, I would suggest if that's the thing you're just crazy passionate about, then how you ask that's what you should be doing your talk on. Awesome. Um, Elon is asking, what if I'm still fairly young, just starting out and have nothing special slash unique to tell the world? Yeah, here's the thing is, I appreciate that, um, that sentiment. And I feel like that is very similar to people asking, well, I, it, it sounds like my idea is not good enough. And that's really typical to feel like that. That's what 99% of our clients have in common is like, I don't think my idea is good enough. I don't think I'm good enough. I don't think my speaking is good enough. I'm not old enough. Like there's a bunch of like limiting belief stuff in that thing. Like, what if I'm not old enough? What if I don't have something to share? And in reality, if you feel called to share about a certain topic, then you are, and, and you're thinking, you start thinking about doing, doing a TEDx talk, you're now thinking about doing something potentially bigger than you've ever done before. And therefore it brings up all the fears because whether you're thinking about something bad or thinking about something good, the mind doesn't necessarily like change. And when you're thinking about doing something bigger than you've ever done before, all the fears come up like those, those fears. I don't have a good enough idea. I'm not old enough. We have a client who's 17 who are helping to get a TEDx talk for, right? Kevin did, Kevin landed his when he was 18. I don't know how, how old you are, but Kevin did his when he was eight or did his when he was 19. He landed it when he was 18 and it paved the way for his adult life. So my question to you, would be what's bigger, your message or your fear? Yep. Yep. I love that. And are you making decisions from your current circumstances or from your vision? Yep. Exactly. Um, well put. And um, on top of that, uh, the questions that your team asks on these calls allows people to stretch themselves and think outside of themselves. Yeah, so, we've been so far we can go here, right? Andrew, like you know this, like you're this crazy entrepreneur, so you're about home and you're kind of mulling around. Sometimes you just go for a freaking coffee and you're like, oh my God, that's it. Because someone gives you a little bit different perspective, right? Yep, yep. So book a call to stretch yourself and to think outside of yourself. Um, this call is just invaluable. Um, Galen is saying thank you. Kavitha is saying thank you. Uh, we're going to end on this question here. Uh, and since you don't work for Ted, I'm not assuming you know this, or I'm assuming, I'm assuming you don't know this, but you might. Uh, do you know how to guest post on TED.com? Um, I wonder, if, I'm not sure if that means like, do you know how to get to get your TEDx talk on TED.com? I'm not we'll sure. Go with that. But that, that you can request for it to happen. And sometimes it just happens. Like we have five clients that just got on TED.com and they didn't even know about it. It just, you know, TED.com just kind of um, picked them up. And otherwise, I wouldn't know what guest post means. <laughs> awesome. That works. Um, Taylor, actually, before everybody goes, sign up for that call. Um, if your heart feels cold to stretch yourself and talk about uh, a talk, um, hashtag TEDx down below. And we'll put the link in the description uh, probably tomorrow. Um, so hashtag TEDx down below. I'll send you over that link. Um, and Taylor, dude, this was awesome. Thank you so Thank much uh, you. for being here with us. Yeah, I appreciate you guys. Thank you guys for showing up. Really appreciate it. Thanks for the questions and the interaction. And Andrew, it's always a pleasure working with you in any regard. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, buddy.